Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our daily time of prayer together at 7.30, just 10 minutes each day to connect together in prayer. And um, we've been traveling through this each and every day since lockdown. We've been doing it for enough time to form a habit and then habits start to form us. So um, great to see people starting to join us. And um, don't forget, use the comment bars. You can post your scriptures. You can post your uh, anonymous prayer requests if it relates to people. Uh, you can say amen. And we're going to be praying through this evening. We're going to use Tim Chester's four G's. So four characteristics that describe God, each beginning with G. If you remember in 2015, uh, Caesar Kalinowski uh, unpacked these in the church. Uh, so we're going to think about how God is great, how God is glorious, how God is good and how God is gracious. And with each one of those, as we see who God is, as we behold, we reflex, we've transformed belief and transformed behaviour. So we're going to use the four G's to help us fix our focus and our attention on God this evening. And it's great to see just all these wonderful people, your names popping up, your faces along the top. Uh, I miss you all so much in person. Uh, it's been good to hear some uh, positive news today, to see the PM on the podium today addressing the nation, to see some of the curves flattening out, but we've still got a long way to go in prayer. And, and so uh, breakthrough and thriving is not going to happen just by digging deep. It's not going to happen by having a stiff upper lip or an optimistic worldview. It's going to happen as we behold Jesus. And as Greg Schofield is pointing out, as we reflex, the, as we behold him, we reflex, we've transformed uh, belief and behaviour. So God is great. What does that mean for us? You don't have to be in control. You can relinquish control. So let's start to focus on the greatness of God. I'm going to read Psalm 145. Psalm 145. It says, I will exalt you. My God, the King, I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. Well, the psalmist David knew the, the power of a habit, a daily habit. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. We can't even get our heads around how great God is. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. What a thing to do this evening, just to meditate, fix our attention onto the wonderful works of things that Jesus has done. I they will tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Maybe even where you are, you might want to pray aloud or even sing aloud uh, as we connect together this evening. Verse 8 of Psalm 145, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. So we're focusing on the goodness of God, the greatness of God, sorry. Uh, he is great and greatly to be praised. No one is like him. No one compares to him. Uh, God, you are matchless in your power, matchless in your worth. No one even comes close to you, God. And today we remind ourselves, we remind one another of how great you are. God, you are great and greatly to be praised. And we remind ourselves, God, that you are uh, so great that you are working all things, bringing about good for those who love you. And so because you are great, God, our reflex response, our natural response to your greatness is surrender. Our natural response to your greatness 
is just to uh, not have to control situations, not to try to control the world around us or others around us, because only you are in control. There's only one person who gets to be in control, Lord, and it's you. And you are totally in control. So we're working through the four G's of Tim Chester's book. Uh, God is great, so we don't have to be in control. Isn't that amazing? You can surrender to his control. Number two, God is glorious. And because God is glorious, because he alone is full of awesome wonder, because he alone is to be revered and feared and held in highest esteem, that means we don't have to fear anyone else. We don't have to fear anything else. He alone is to be feared. He alone is glorious. His opinion of you is the only opinion that really matters. Isn't that wonderful news? So God, we praise you for your glory. God, you are radiant in glory. God, you alone are glorious in all the earth. God, you fill the earth with all of your glory, your splendour, your majesty. God, when we, we see the glory of what you have created, Lord, it just gives us the tiniest glimpse of the glory of the Creator. God, we thank you in these days that for many of us, we've had an opportunity to be outside a little bit more, in, in nature a little bit more, as we've walked around, God, and beheld your glory. And God, because you alone are to be feared, we thank you that we can be free from fear. We don't have to fear anyone or anything. The Proverbs says, doesn't it, uh, Proverbs 29, I think, that the fear of man is a snare. The fear of man traps you. God, we don't have to fear anyone. We don't have to fear uh, anything, God. We don't have to fear COVID-19 or any virus because you are in control. You are great. You are good. And you are glorious. Thank you, God, for that this evening. Thank you, Lord. We can live for your approval alone. So we prayed through God is great. God is glorious. And number three, God is good. God is good. I think that word can so often lose its power, its impact. It becomes so average to us. But what do we mean by God is good? We mean that he alone satisfies. Isn't that wonderful news? I want to remind you, church, this evening that God is good. He alone satisfies the desires of the human heart. Isn't that wonderful news? That in his presence is fullness of joy. He alone satisfies. He is the one who is beautiful. He is the one who is full of delight. Um, he is the one that takes our breath away. His name is like honey on our lips. It is the sweetest name, the name of Jesus. That's what we mean when we say he is good. Um, if you saw Jess Pickford's um, Moravian Bible study this morning about the Syrophoenician woman, she was talking about how the crumbs under the table from Jesus are more than enough to sustain us. And we feel like sometimes we've just got crumbs we, we don't see that that's more than enough because God is so good to us. And because he is a good heavenly father, we don't have to worry about what we will eat or drink or wear, as Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount. Your heavenly father knows that you need those things before you even ask. God, we are blown away by your goodness. You are a good heavenly father who loves to give good gifts to your children. We thank you for it this day. We thank you for the way it transforms us. So we pray through God is great. So we don't have to be in control because he alone is in control. We can surrender. God is glorious. He alone is to be revered and feared. So we don't have to fear anyone or anything or any virus. God alone is good. And so we don't have to look for satisfaction in other things. Um, at a time where there seems so much lack around us, lack of freedom, lack of choice, um, we can be satisfied by him. And finally, God is 
gracious. Our Heavenly Father is so gracious to you. He knows your frame, he knows that you're made from dust, and he is patient and he is gracious towards you. Isn't that wonderful news? God, we thank you for your grace. You are abounding in grace. As it says, Lord, um, let there be grace upon grace, let grace abound to each one of us. Let us stand under your waterfall, your deluge of grace. And because you are gracious, God, we don't have to prove ourselves. We don't have to work to prove our righteousness because you've gifted it to us. We don't have to work and strive to justify our place around your table because of your spirit of adoption that makes us sons and daughters by which we cry, Abba, Father. You have made us acceptable to you through the work of Christ on the cross. So thank you, Lord, that we don't need to impress anyone. I thank you that we can be vulnerable with one another in community, God, because we know that you are gracious to us and you accept us. And so we're just gazing into scripture. We're gazing to see who God is, to behold him, knowing that as we do, we reflex with transformed belief. We reflex with transformed behaviour. God is great. God is glorious. God is good. God is gracious. We're going to finish there. And um, let me just pray for you. I pray uh, that you would experience the goodness of God in your life. I pray that all fear would be broken in your life as you learn just to fear him alone uh, and to revere him alone. I pray that your view of God, your vision of God would grow and it would enlarge and it would uh, just blow you away as you seek him this day and each day. I pray that the Lord will protect you and keep you and be gracious to you, that his face would shine upon you and that he would fill you with his wonderful peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen.